Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to the Young Quisitions Knitting Podcast. I'm Celine and I hope you guys have a beverage. I'm drinking coffee as usual. And it's gotten cold because I've been drinking it. It takes me forever to finish my coffee. Um, I got some finished objects. I think only two, um, two swatches and two whips right now. Um, and I blocked some of my knits, like three total, two or more hair sweaters and then the last one is my Agneet cardigan. I still don't know how to say that correctly because it's in Danish. Um, I cleaned up a little bit of my shelf, but not really. Uh, I still need to put a lot of stuff away, but we'll get we'll get to it when I want to. Um, so my first finished object is the Euless Genser. That's what I finished first this month, or I guess it's last month in June. Of course, I haven't blocked this one, but um, it does fit really nicely right now. So I'm gonna wear a couple more times um, while it is a nice size, I guess. I know that um, the stitching and everything will like block out wider. You know, I'm just wearing it um, on cold days, which I haven't really been able to because it this week is um, a heat wave and it's finally cooling down. So, which makes blocking so much easier because I can take advantage of the heat and then everything will dry out much quicker. So that's what I like about summer. Um, so yeah, I just want to compare this one to my blocked, my blocked Euless Genser. And this one, um, I did it according to pattern, which, you know, this is like way too much yoke for me and the sleeves did block out much wider because I stretched it a little bit because it was like kind of too tight and I want it to be much looser um but yeah and this is the back I don't know if I've shown you the back but yeah and this I don't think the yoke has changed much but I did try to um, widen the body so it'd be looser. And I think the only thing I did differently than the pattern is um, I started the long tail cast on with a three millimeter and I did the ribbing here in three millimeter instead of 2.5 because I noticed that it's much larger than here which i did a 2.5 millimeter and then the bottom ribbing i did three because i think i forgot to um switch out the needles so that's just my bad maybe just size side by side comparison is better is effective and the changes I made on this one is I um, started the long tail cast on with a three millimeter um, I shortened the yoke so after I was done with the lace work um, I did five more rounds and then split the body so that the yoke is much shorter about and the yoke is um, around 20 centimeters, measuring from the cast on edge 
from the middle front, the, from the middle front. Um, and then I did the sleeves according to the pattern. Um, and then I did the decreases at the cuff. I did the 2.5 millimeters. And then I bound off with the 3.25. And same for the body ribbing, 2.5 millimeter for the ribbing or for the half twisted rib. Um, and then I bound off with the 3.25 because my bind off is much, is much tighter this time around. Um, and for the cuffs, I recommend not doing magic loop because the cuff or the lines or the twisted rib will just be super wonky and you can't really correct it in a twisted rib unless or in the mohair because the mohair sticks together so well. Um, so I really suggest just use deep hands or um, just a small circumference. So yeah, those are my tips for the Eula Skenser. Um, so that's one finished object. My next finished object is the June Top Light, which took me forever. I think I casted this on in October or September. Um, so that was ages ago. And now I can like finally wear it. So it's kind of obvious, but um, I did the Judy's Magic Cast On, um, which was kind of a mistake because you can see exactly where it is. It's like this huge, obvious line because um, it's just like unforgiving in a stiffer yarn. So it's like Judy's Magic Cast On is fine with like wool and things like that, or things that have like stretch. But because it's silk, it does it, and it made the tension super wonky at that area. But I knit this whole thing with a 2.5 millimeter because it wasn't necessary to um, buy a 2 millimeter for all the um, I cord edging. Especially at the end, you didn't have to, you like cast off with an eye cord at the bottom if you do Judy's Magic Cast On, but if you do regular cast on, then you just have to add it at the end, um, which is like not bad. But if I were to do this again, I would knit it bottom up just because you would avoid that crazy line where the tension is much different from the top and the bottom. There's the one thing about this that I found really difficult is finding the right length to knit the straps. And I knit both sides to eight mil or eight inches. So it would be 16 in all, 16 inches circumference um, for the armhole. So yeah, that was um, ideal for me. And it fits really nicely to be honest. Um, I think I could have gotten away with it with a three millimeter. I think I could have gotten away with it because it is kind of tight um, on me. And if you want it looser, just go up a needle size. Um, and you can knit pure silk in a three millimeter. Um, and a 2.5 is just, it's really dense, so. If you're concerned about see-throughness, 2.5 is for stockinette, for pure, pure silk is the way to go. And the front of this tank is higher than the back. So that's how you can tell <laughs> um, the front and the back. Although I, maybe I should have um, marked it somehow by like woven in all the ends. So I, uh, it's kind of like too late to do that. So yeah, this is the front. Or no, this is the back. What am I saying? This is the front. And um, I don't know if you could see that, but 
I did mess up the Judy's Magic cast on in the round when I was picking back up to do the body. So, um, yeah, just do a bottom up so you don't have to deal with all the fiddliness of the Judy's Magic cast on because it was really hard to cast on that many stitches on a very small needle. I think because I knit the cord in 2.5 instead of the 2 millimeter that was recommended, I think the straps will um, lay much flatter because in the photos of Petite Knits versions of the June Top Light, it like puckers a little bit at the top or the straps just like curls in a lot. So usually I cord fixes that. Um, so hopefully it will lay flatter. Um, but I'm finding that right now the the front curve or the front and back curve because they're knit the same way is like kind of rolling because there's too many stitches here for the eye cord at least. So I think that's why she recommended going down a needle size or two European needle sizes. I didn't want it to be too tight because I knew that if I switch needle sizes, I just knit really tight. So that's why I was like, mm, I think I could get away with just the 2.5. So yeah, I'm glad that I did that. But hopefully I can wash it soon because I'm just gonna toss it in the um, washing machine. And sorry for leaning so close because I've already filmed this once um, and then I was like leaning on the table and then everything was like out of frame or like everything was too close. So that's why I'm refilming. Um, totally forgot to say that. So those are my two finished objects. And let me go to my finished swatches. So this is my first swatch. It's um, a like chevron lace open work kind of um, pattern. And then I did a two by two or no, one by one rib here. And I made this in fingering weight yarn, which is the pure silk, because I just, I have it, so might as well use it. Um, and I wanted to make a like mesh top with this. And if you recognize the pattern, it's from the To Be So Lonely sweater, which this pattern is apparently an, an older kind of pattern or more classic pattern, I guess. Basically, it's like, like anybody can use it. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not like, there's no gatekeeping on this because it doesn't, it's not owned by anybody. Like the pattern itself is not owned by anybody. So I want to use this pattern to make a fingering weight, like summery um, mesh top. That's long sleeve with like, Instead of like a closed or like a tighter cuff, I want it to be like open. So it's like more flared and loosey goosey, you know, kind of like a blouse or, or like blouse number one, if you've seen that. But I haven't figured out the neck hole increases um, because it's really hard to do increases with this kind of pattern. Um, it's way easier to do decreases so I'm like really struggling <laughs> so I'll probably have to make another swatch with the increasings yeah and I just haven't done it because I'm working on other things so this is the test net I'm doing it's um, handmade by Florence's petal drop camisole and I finished the swatch and if you're wondering why I did it in two different colors, it's because I had to rip out a lot of the strap part because I knit it too long. Um, 
on the June top light, so I just had I just used the leftover cut pieces for this and then I did the rest and the rhubarb juice because I have a lot of it and it's right here. Um, this is what I have left of the I think second ball of yarn for the June top light. Okay, yeah, so there's two ends, one here, and then one here, and this is where I um, attach the yarn for the Judy's after the, um, finishing the top part so the, for the Judy's Magic cast on. So it took like one and a half, I think, for the June top light, which is like nothing. Um, it's very little yarn. It uses very little. So yeah, this is my second ball. It's like halfway through, I think, or more than halfway. Um, and for the rhubarb juice, I still have so much. It's like never-ending uh, yarn for swatching for pure silk. It's, oh, I just heard a, a cat scratch my outdoor mat. I was like, one, oh, it's like, what is that? Yeah, I haven't cast on for this yet because I'm working on something else, um, which I'll tell you about like um, in a bit. But first, gotta cover some other things first. Um, so I made my cousin knit this. It's um, basically a garter square with i core edging because I was gonna make her do the Sophie scarf but I think it's too hard for her because um, she didn't have enough brain space for it because um, she's just like really tired from her job so yeah she just have to complete another, another i cord or for the cast on edge so yeah that's all she needs to do to complete this like coaster I guess she's just gonna put it next to her like nice stand or something and surprisingly the garter stitch is like really even maybe it's the yarn I don't know but yeah it's much even for like a beginner knitter because she forgot like everything <laughs> except uh, the knit stitch with the remaining ball of yarn <laughs> Um, I still have one more complete full ball of Drops Lima. So this is what half a ball will get me is uh, for the Sophie scarf. Is there anything else? But yeah, I'm just knitting this for her because I hate this color if you haven't heard. I just knit this um, in between knitting the Eulitz Genser, like when it's I don't want to work on it. I worked on this. And I might have enough to make a thinner version like this one for like um, her hair. And the I found that the garter is like so much closer compared to the my fingering weight um, versions. So I think it'll look better maybe. But yeah, this is going to be on hold for the foreseeable future. Um, and then my next whip. I guess this is my first whip. Um, I guess I don't have that many whips today. And this is my self-drafted pattern. I wrote like... The way that I work is I write everything down, like the gauge first, um, and I did a swatch already, like a long, long time ago, like last year or sometime. Um, and I wrote all the instructions, and then I followed the instructions. So that's how I work, um, because uh, I just forget stuff so easily, and it's also black, so it's really, really hard to see the stitches even with bright lighting. So yeah, it was imperative that I 
write down first because that's how I usually work um, so I'm in the middle of a row so let me finish the row while I talk about this and um, I'm using um, this four, four ply merino vicuña blend um, I'll put everything um, like the yarns I used and the patterns in this in the description but I won't link it because that's just too many links you know um, and yeah I got did I say it I got it from color mart it's like a cone that's 850 meters per 150 grams so that comes out to be around 283 meters per 50 grams so it comes it's technically still like four ply light fingering but it's super close to a lace weight yarn I mean it practically is a lace weight <laughs> to be honest um, but it's not cobweb weight so at least there's that and now that I think about it, I'm just like, all the hand knitting yarn that's like on the market that is comparable is either light fingering, which is at usually at like 250 meters per 50 grams, or it's lace weight, which is 300 meters per 50 grams. And there's not really much in between those two um, those two specs so uh, I think it's gonna be difficult to find testers who are who is willing to do this um, but also I haven't graded it at all so there's that and because I only finished like the neck hole aka the demon hole um so yeah this is the front this is the back and i may have already messed up so yay for me but i don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal so yeah and i have like a ton of stitch markers to mark like where something started or something ended. Um, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't need that in the actual pattern or when people are testing it. Um, but yeah, and I measured the thickness of this yarn, like how, like the thickness of the strand and apparently it comes out at exactly one millimeter. <laughs> thick so whatever that means um oh let me measure the pure silk i mean the pure silk is like slightly over one millimeter and this is like exactly one millimeter i don't know is this so similar but the merino feels much thinner the silk has like substance but then this like can stretch a lot so it like gets thinner and this is a really strong yarn because it's the 10 ply so it's like five two ply yarns um twisted together so that's basically a cord but it's merino so it's soft or it's like extra fine merino so it's super soft um, but I'm thinking that it's going to block a bit and um, the stitch count or stitch gauge is like 34 to 36 stitches per 4 inches 10 centimeters um, so that's also really difficult to get with the fingering weight yarn because I'm knitting this on three millimeters, so 
they either have to go down a size or, or go down to lace weight. So I think that's going to be hard to achieve the gauge. But I know that Isayer has a lace weight. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of companies have a lace weight yarn, but um, it's usually alpaca, but it's better to use a wool. And it has to be next to skin, so I'm not sure. I mean, baby alpaca is super, super soft. Like, I don't know. Um, let's see what else. Let me put this away first. Um, oh, and side so note, I used the uh, Pearl Soho sweater soap and New England and Cedar Wood. But mostly, I smell the soap and not the essential oils in this um, wool soap. So, and I just got I got it on sale, so whatever. I'll just deal with it. Um, and a little goes a long way, of course. And I use my kitchen sink to block or to hold the, all of my stuff. Um, I could have washed more in that sink because it's a very deep sink, but um, maybe I'll put some pictures up. Um, yeah, it's a very deep sink, but I don't have enough floor sp space to block more than three. And um, actually, after I squeezed out all the water in the Eula Skinser, the pink one, this one, um, I just hung it because like most of the water is out and it's super lightweight so yeah I just hung it um, and I dried it like this and it dried out really fast it did dry out yesterday which is like the day I washed it so um, and it was also really hot so thankfully it wasn't really like drooping that much or it didn't really stretch that much I think that's it for me. I hope y'all had a great time knitting st summer things. And if it's still cold where you are, <laughs> um, let's hope for some sunshine at least. And I hope you're knitting like some nice yarn, some nice patterns. And I'm hoping to cast on the petal drop camisole soon oh my gosh and i totally forgot to mention this rabbit hole that i've been in well i haven't been in it for a while but i went to I went down the vintage crochet rabbit hole and i'll put up the picture of what i had translated um from vintage terms to u.s terms so yeah that really wrecked my brain for a bit and yeah, there's a lot of missing info in the instructions because it's in the this encyclo encyclopedia. I'm not saying that right. It's in this encyclopedia of needlework, which has like a ton of stuff in it. It's basically like a manual book for um, different types of needlework crafts. Um, and crochet is one of them. Crochet, they have a lot of like basic patterns in crochet and like lace crochet and the one that I'm showing you right now is the crochet um, chair bag which honestly is like really complicated because they don't really tell you it, like how to join some stuff into a motif they just like omit it completely and they are missing like one whole motif like there's no instructions for one motif so it's like how do you miss that so yeah so i, I added that instructions um and i can't uh test it because i have zero crochet thread right now um i like to work in crochet number 10 
number 20 and number 40. I don't really like working in number 80. Um, but the original pattern is worked in. Um, like the larger motifs are worked in number 50, which no one makes anymore, so that sucks. And number 120, which also no commercial yarn companies make that anymore so but i did find a alternative on etsy it's called the shop is called heirloom knitting i think the listing is called gossamer cotton mercerized and that is a comparable replacement but it's also 16 dollars per 25 grams so that's very expensive probably won't do that but I could probably make it in size 40 and do the um, the chain stuff or like the filling in um, size number 80 yeah because I find that I found that size number 120 is twice as thin as number 50 so yeah, if you double 120 together, then it's number 50. So same thing for number 80, I think. I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong, but I think that's, um, you could just do that. So until I get that yarn, I probably won't be able to test it um, and fix all my mistakes in that, um, in that pattern because it was like a really rough translation because they omit so much, to be honest, they omit so much, so yeah. And another sip of coffee. And I hope you guys have a nice day. Bye.